a lone boat in the ocean, sorrow of an American graduate student. Recently, Pentagon software chief resigns because in his opinion, America has already lost the global tech war to a nation. His claim might be controversial, but there might be indirect evidence that supports the claim. When you attend a national science and engineering conference in America, you will find that a majority of attendees and presenters speak with a strong accent. The graduate schools of many science and engineering fields in America are filled by foreign students. People may think that American students are lazy and not interested in advanced studies in hard science and engineering. We present an example here that may lead you to think otherwise. It is a real story about the unpleasant experience an American student encountered in science graduate studies, which eventually led him to quit the program. The example might not be singular, and it might shed light to understand the challenges and problems America faces. We publish this story as not to blame anyone, or to criticize any organization, but to bring Americans to attention the difficulties and barriers our young generation might face in advanced studies of science and engineering. The story is real, but to protect the privacy of the student and the professor, we use fake names in describing them. Kanha was a kind, happy American kid, naive and innocent, who showed interest in maths and science at a young age. When he was 12, he scored well above 2000 on an SAT test and got a perfect score in the maths portion. He not only excelled in maths and science, but also languages and other subjects in high school. Around the age of 20, he finished his master's degree in a prestigious university and was accepted into the PhD program of a few elite universities such as Stanford and CMU. At the time, Kana met in a conference Henry, a foreign student who came from strong nation. Henry had done some outstanding research work and would be a fresh PhD from a top American university. Kanha was enthralled by Henry's work and respected him very much. When he was a master's student, he made many good friends who were foreign students coming from strong nation and cooperated with them to publish a few papers. Kanha chose to follow Henry, who would be his advisor, to enroll in a very good university, where Henry would be a professor. In the first year, Henry recruited about 20 students from strong nation and they became schoolmates of Kanha. They all worked as research assistants in the same group supervised by Henry. In the beginning, Kanha was excited to work with so many bright young people. He had a happy time with them, chatting and cracking jokes in the school office. But gradually, Kanha found that there's a gulf of irrevocability between them. The new generation of students from Strong Nation is very different from those he met a few years ago. Their new leadership had successfully brainwashed the new generation to support their government policies blindly without questioning right and wrong. Time and again Khan and they clashed on the debate of basic human rights issues. They accused the Americans of all conflicts just as their diplomatic war wolves scold Americans publicly. They defend their government for many well-known and highly suppressive policies and form their own group in their social media, which censors any dissident opinions and they read only articles from it written in their own language. Kanha had no problem understanding their language, but he advised them to speak English in school when they are with some Americans. They couldn't care less and answered, why should we? They should learn our language. They refused to accept any democratic values. Kanha felt disturbed and sad, feeling lonely in the department. The more disappointed and depressed moment came when he found out that Henry also works for a company which is closely associated with the government of Strong Nation. Henry certainly makes a lot of money from his work, but his research results, including those done by all his 20-plus students, would be used by Strong Nation for free and may be applied in the surveillance of dissidents. Kant had decided to leave Henry. He took a year off and went to Europe to work as an intern. When he came back, the COVID pandemic broke out. He changed his advisor to another professor, who also came from Strong Nation, the only professor who was in his field besides Henry. The pandemic has come and gone, but the landscape of academia has changed sharply. He feels that the academic is enveloped by an atmosphere of SJWs. In investigating the COVID source, they openly censor scientific information and trash the lab leak theory as conspiracy. One evening, on the campus, he stared at the slowly rising crescent moon, which was changing shape and waxing, he felt the faith before him seemed strangely torn asunder. The science community is corrupted, the world is sick, 
Life is suffering, he thought. He sank into a mood of depression, and his passion for science and scientific research faded. At the time, he was also infected by COVID in a sports club, but he fully recovered quickly. The last straw that collapsed Kana came, when the university announced there will be a vaccine mandate for all students. Without proof of vaccination, a student cannot register. Such a policy is not acceptable to Kana, who supports free speech and personal freedom. So he quit the PhD program and leave the academic world he once loved so much. As an American, there is not much loss to Kana, he could easily find a job, becoming one of the many, and have an easy comfortable life like many of his friends. However, there will be a loss to the American science community. It will have one less native-born PhD in science and engineering, who loves free speech and democracy. He will be replaced by one from strong nation, who likely supports the policies of the government of the suppressive regime, and who could one day become an outstanding scientist and an influential lobbyist for the regime. Some years ago, American manufacturing industries were dismantled and moved to strong nation, creating a huge trade deficit. They send crispy goods to us and we give them dollars. They cycle the dollars back to this country to infiltrate and corrupt it. Many people and organizations get easy money without doing much work because of the infiltration money. Consequently, the Wall Street elites and many influential organizations speak for them, and an army of writers write for them. Will the phenomenon of dismantlement of manufacturing also happen to American graduate science and engineering schools? It is a question every American should think about.